It was probably the most emotional period of my life. That was my fear. I was able to see the cabbage in the fair. Subhanallah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. It is currently just gone 12 o'clock and we are trying to order an Uber to then take us to the bus station to then get the bus from Riyadh to Mecca. The bus leaves at one o'clock and I think it's maybe around a 20 minute drive from where we are now. So just looking at getting ourselves a taxi. I'm really struggling to see and the sun's not even in my eyes. I don't know what it is. It's just the hot temperature. I'm not used to it. Today I'm just feeling really quite nervous and I don't know my emotions are a wee bit all over the place. I had a really bad dream last night that when I went to perform Umrah I did everything wrong <laughs> and then I didn't even make any du'as and when I came out I was really annoyed with myself and at the time I felt like I was just so gobsmacked when I seen the Kaaba I just didn't know what to say so <laughs> I hope it doesn't turn out like my dream did inshallah if I'm able to go that is We've arrived now to where the bus has taken us We're here with all of our luggage and we were told just to walk down the road and get on the bus now. It's 20 to 12, so the bus should be leaving in around 20 minutes, inshallah. So many lovely old buildings here. Really, really beautiful. You can see there's loads of buses parked here. They're all going at the same time at one o'clock to Mecca. There's even more buses down here. Everybody has their name on a wee seat, so you already designated your seats. And it's just so comfortable, lovely leather seats. There's also this little compartment here, and you open it up, and it holds your drinks. That's so cute, isn't it? <laughs> the bus was meant to leave three minutes ago, and most of the people aren't even here. There's, I think, four people sitting at the back, and nobody else has turned up yet but they are meant to be here because each one has a name tag so i don't know i was expecting we were supposed to be leaving at one maybe it was the meetup time i don't know but arab time is always a lot later than what they say i feel like in the uk we always have to do things a lot earlier than what we say or like make sure that we're on time here's hamza back with the goods what did you get uh what a few juice and croissant <laughs> it's already two o'clock now and there's still no sign of us moving. A lot of people have turned up but there's still a lot of empty seats. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm more than excited, yeah. How do you really, feel? really happy. Inshallah. Finally that time has come. Yeah. yeah. I was saying this to Hamza, this has been a dream for him since he's been a very, very young age. And for me, obviously, I only reverted to Islam one year ago, so it's been my dream for the last year. And inshallah it all goes ahead and we're able to perform Umrah. We have just stopped off here at it's a little masjid and then there's lots of little stalls where you can buy some things. We just caught up with our prayers, alhamdulillah. And now we are heading back to the bus. I think the complete bus journey takes around nine hours, which is a long, long journey. It was just cold. I've literally just woken up. I've been nodding off. As you can see there, the sun is setting. So Hamza has just taken down our iftar, our croissants, and some water. There's lots of cars all the way down the road, and they've all pulled over and they're having their iftar outside. They've got a wee blanket and they put it on the ground, and it's so so lovely to see. We've had a couple of stops where we've been able to catch up with our players and also have our iftar and then have a little snack after. Now we have a 40 minute stop where Hamza needs to go and put on his ihram. I've just finished praying the two rakat now and I'm going to have to head back to the bus. I'm not sure where Hamza is but I met a lovely sister from Algeria. She was so, so sweet. And she was welcoming me to her country. Inshallah, one day I'll be visiting Algeria, inshallah. There's literally thousands of people here, mashallah. 
We've just stopped off for some Sahur. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we've gone for, chicken with rice and a couple of marandas. I got myself a spoon though. <laughs> you can take the girl out of Scotland but you can't take Scotland oh, yeah. out of the girl. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, yesterday we managed to perform Umrah. It was the most incredible experience of my life. Honestly, I'm so, so grateful to have been able to come here and be invited to the house of Allah. And I just pray that Allah accepts it. I mean, I last finished up the vlog when we were on the bus here and by the time we arrived to the hotel it was about five in the morning and our plan originally had been just to go out straight away and perform our Umrah but we were so exhausted after the bus journey it went on a lot longer than the nine hours and we just felt like we wanted to be a lot more fresh to go and perform Umrah we didn't want to be tired we really wanted to have that mindset by the time we left yesterday we had already prayed Asr so it was a little bit later on in the day and then we went to Masjid Al Haram. There's free buses in each hotel, which is really, really great. So we got the bus there. And to be honest with you guys, I have never seen that many people in all of my life. It was absolutely insane. We were walking around so much trying to find where we were even meant to go in the entrance. We ended up upstairs and it took us so long to even be able to come downstairs. and. Really, there was a lot of faffing about for us trying to find where to go and it was just so, so busy, so many people. We managed to get directly outside the front door and we could just see the top of the Kaaba pointing out and they actually closed the gates because Maghrib was about to call. I think at the time Maghrib was going to call in about an hour. So we had to stand at these gates. Then it was time to break the fast and we were handed out dates and we also got a bottle of water which was really nice. Then all of a sudden they just opened this gate and everybody starts running. Everybody's running in there and the prayer just calls. So literally as soon as we enter the door, we still can't really see the cab at all. We just plonk our stuff down on the floor. There's a line of women, I got next to them, in front there was a line of men, Hamza went there and we just prayed Maghrib. And I am not even kidding you, I was crying through that prayer. Just to be there was the most incredible feeling. I can't even describe it to you. At this point, I hadn't even probably seen the cab, but and I was crying. I was actually crying before I left the hotel room. The day was just full of so many emotions. I was sobbing literally most of the day. It was, I can't even put into words what the feeling was like. After we prayed Maghrib, me and Hamza then made our way to the Kaaba. It's like nothing I have ever seen in my life. The pictures, the videos, everything I've seen on social media does not do it justice. It is the most incredible place I have been to ever in all my life. And the feeling of being there, I just can't describe that. I've never had that feeling in my entire life. And the connection I felt with Allah during my whole time being there was absolutely unbelievable. I said to you guys that I wasn't gonna vlog anything, but I thought maybe I would take a couple of pictures but I didn't even take my phone out of my bag. I felt so spiritually connected throughout the whole process that I didn't even think twice about my phone. I couldn't physically even take it out of my bag. As it is Ramadan, you guys know, it is very, very busy here. So there is a lot of pushing and shoving as you're making tawaf around the Kaaba. But in the moment, you're just, you're not even really thinking about it because as I say, you're so spiritually connected, you're focusing on the du'as that you want to make. I honestly, I can't describe it to you guys. It's just the most incredible feeling. I pray each and every one of you manage to come here and perform Umrah, inshallah. After we finished the tawaf, we then had to pray two rakat. And because we hadn't really broken our fast, we just had some dates. That's when we sat down and we were given lots of different food there in the masjid. And we just had a little bit of a rest. You guys, before I performed Umrah, I didn't think it would be physically draining on the body, but it is, it really, really is. Our feet, honestly, were in so much pain. It's really, really the most incredible experience, but it is also really difficult physically. After we had a little bit of a break, we tried Zamzam water, which that was my first time drinking Zamzam water. 
Alhamdulillah, it was absolutely incredible. And then Isha actually called. So we stayed where we were, we prayed Isha, we stayed there for Tarhuwi prayer. That was the most incredible experience as well. Being able to pray Tarhuwi prayer during Ramadan at Masjid Al Haram, it was absolutely incredible, Alhamdulillah. Once we finished with Tarhuwi prayer, we then carried on with our Umrah. We then went to do Safa and Marwa, and that again in itself was another incredible experience. I thought maybe I would lose Hamza because he had to run between the green lights, and obviously as a woman I walk, but no, it was absolutely fine. The men always wait at the side for the women, and then they can walk again round together. So. The entire thing was absolutely incredible. Hamza then went to a barber and he has had his head shaved. Then when we got back to the hotel, Hamza cut off some of my hair. Women have to cut off, I think, between one and two centimetres, roughly around that. So that is us now, completed our Umrah, alhamdulillah. May Allah accept it from us, Amin. While we were there, we were hoping to actually just stay until Fajr. The whole Umrah experience was emotionally and physically draining. We just thought it was a better idea for us to come back and have a proper sleep. So so now the plan is to head back to Masjid Al Haram and I'm going to take you guys along with us. We will leave this hotel and get the bus downstairs. Here's one of the buses here outside the hotel. That bus was actually already full so now we're going to get another one. I think they just come every time they wait until they get full and then they'll just bring another bus. So you can already see that there's a couple there lining up. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Do you recognize this guy? <laughs> you have them. <laughs> distributed which is really 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 lovely it's literally so hard to even see anything everything's so white and the sun is just beaming off it look at that mashallah Allah. here again I'm starting to feel so emotional this place is just truly truly incredible alhamdulillah alhamdulillah that I'm able to experience this alhamdulillah Asr just called as we were walking along and what I love is just as soon as the prayer calls everybody just finds a bit on the ground and just goes and prays you always find a line of women and then a line of men and it's just so so beautiful really really amazing subhanallah as we're walking through just now, you can see the very top of the Kaaba. Hamza has decided to go and try and kiss the black stone, but I'm not even attempting it, especially during Ramadan, it's just too busy. 
when we were doing tawaf yesterday I was already getting quite crushed so I don't want to risk it I don't want my hijab to come off so I was actually sitting down there and I had such a nice view of the Kaaba but then we all had to move so I'm kind of sitting up the steps I have no idea if Hamza is actually going to find me again I ended up losing Hamza because we kept getting pushed out and there was no way I was allowed to stay I kept trying to stay but then the guards were like shouting at me and clicking in my face and telling me I had to leave so there was literally no option. Now I've ended up upstairs and I've tried to speak to so many people to see if they can share me their data so I can get in touch with Hamza, but nobody really speaks any English and I don't have any Arabic. But finally I spoke to a policeman who was kind enough to give me his phone data and I sent a message to Hamza and then realized I have his phone in my bag. Stuff for us. So I literally, I don't think I will find Hamza in here. It's just way too busy. So it's almost Maghrib now anyway. I've got some Zam Zam water and a little iftar bag that a little boy was handing out. I cannot believe it, but I found Hamza. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. We were both making dua to be able to find each other again. Honestly, over two million people here. I didn't think I would see him again. Alhamdulillah. Isha prayer is probably the most emotional prayer of my life. That was my fear. I was able to see the Kaaba during the prayer. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at the view from the top. We've come up to Safa and Malwa to show you guys. It's so, so busy. I ended the vlog a bit abruptly earlier on. I actually got my GoPro confiscated off me at one point. I was filming my iftar for you guys. I was literally just showing my bag of iftar and that was it and nobody else was in the picture, but a security guard complained about me and then I'm not sure if he was a policeman or a security guard, but he ended up actually grabbing my GoPro off me and shouting at me that I had to delete everything. And I told him to go through, look at the video, it was just myself, there was nobody else in it. And he just kind of like threw the GoPro back to me. So it put me off a little bit of carrying on filming. But never mind, at that point as well, I had lost Hamza, but Alhamdulillah, honestly, I cannot believe that we managed to find each other. Alhamdulillah, that was crazy. Now we are just waiting for the bus to go back. We can't actually find our bus, there's that many. There's thousands of buses here. So I'm just sitting on a wall now because I'm too tired to look. I'm letting Hamza over there. He's searching for me. But this is my view right here of the clock tower. So it doesn't get much better than that. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next vlog, inshallah.